Yep. <laughs> Good afternoon. Welcome home to Mailer's Landing. I'm Sue and we are here in Gardening Zone 6B in New England. And this is my friend Megan and her tiny dog. <laughs> and Megan has some wood chips for us. I was going to ask you a question. Yes, dear. <laughs> Where'd the wood chips come from? The trees. <laughs> They grew them themselves. <laughs> They've been here for a while. They're artisanally, free range, homegrown wood chips. Yeah. Season. They're seasoned. They're seasoned. I thank you so much You're for them. You're very welcome. We're going to put them in the car and take them away. You can take them. You can come back and grab more. Whatever. We'll have to. Okay. We'll see about that. Yeah, we'll okay. see. <laughs> So let me show you what's going on. We're sweating. <gasps> so much wood chip. Yes. So much wood chip. Uh, all right, so you got a wood chipper. We got a big wood chipper. Oh, came oh, down. The oh. Wall, it came down. All of that. Backed it up to here, and then we shot the tops off of all of that stuff that way. It's mostly just sprinkling on it. So how many trees was this? How many trees was like it? 20. 20 trees. 20 trees. And how long did it take to to do that? To chip that mess up? <laughs> Three hours, four hours. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Three birch trees. Some old guys like these that were dead at the top. Some little ones. So that's what we've got so far. Puppy, you haven't helped at all. And <laughs> that's what's left. So we have bastard. our work cut out for us. The other problem is Lib's van is just about full. So we think we've, we're gonna be able to take another five or six, maybe seven bags uh, between the two vehicles and yeah. then we'll make a date to do it all over again. <laughs> So we're going to get this stuff back to the house and start spreading it out. See you there. We are back from Megan's with a metric load. Oh my God, there's just so much wood chips. If we made it halfway through that pile, I would be really surprised. Um, so this is the, I feel like the luckiest girl in the world, y'all. I got a whole bunch of wood chips for the cost of the bags to move them with. Oh my goodness. Thank you, Megan. Next step is to get them out to the back. They are in those big bags. Guys are gonna lay them out. I'm gonna go through with the machete. My son, I know my son loves me because he entrusted me with the machete. Um, I, I don't know, if, does it qualify as a machete? It might be, might be too slender to be a machete. I'll have to ask Bill. Um, He's our, our arms and armor guy around here. Um, so anyway, it's gonna be my job to go through, slit those bags and lay them open. The idea is that the paper from the bag will act as a weed barrier and get us that sterile seed bed. And then the wood chips on top are just gonna keep it down. And the paper will decompose over time and the wood chips will hold that dirt down and give us the nice foundations of a garden. 
So this is that space that the guys have cleared. If you go back to the corn video, you'll you'll hear me complaining that it was all knotweed. And you can see just how far they've cleared back here. And this is where we're gonna put the wood chips. So the guys are bringing the rest of the wood chips up a few at a time. I think the, they can get five bags in a load and I'm going to get in there and start slitting these bags open with a, my trusty knife <laughs> and then we'll rake them around. So here we go. Twenty-two, thirty-gallon lawn and leaf bags, full of wood chips, and I think we've probably got four or five inches of wood chips thick, and it covered this space behind me. It's not a huge space, but it is a goodly space, and. Um, I don't know what we're going to do. We'll, we'll go back and get the rest of the mulch from Megan at some point this week and lay that down. Um, as far as weed barrier, our coverage was a little thin. Um, there was less paper bag than I imagined there was <laughs> after everything was torn up and laid down. Um, but it, it's a good start. And uh, all right, we'll just deal with the handful of weeds that come up when they come up. It's all good. This is seasoning the ground for the coming planting season. So it's going to be covered in snow over the winter. There's going to be a lot going on there. Um, when we were laying it down, we found great stuff. We found earthworms. We found um, mycorrhizal kind of nonsense going on there. There's a network, a mushroom network. Uh, and so I'm really optimistic about having this as a growing space for next year. We'll see what happens. This is how we science it, right? The science happens to be botany for science. There we go. So we're back in the front of the garden after Finishing up in the back and whoo -ee, 
that was a job, man. What did you find out on the, you did some math and I did some math. Uh, just over a ton of wood chips we moved today. Raked, bagged, transported over, unbagged, spread out. It was, it was a, it was a day. It was a day. <laughs> it, was a, it was a long day. Um, oh my goodness. Thank you again, Megan. This was amazing. So wood chips, we have purchased mulch in that quantity and it was almost $300. Mm -hmm. um, so this was like, this was amazing. It cost us the bags. So I think I spent 15 bucks over the whole thing. So I am wicked grateful. So let, let's talk about what we're hoping to do back there. So the, the big part and why we got the, the wood chips was there was a mound in the back behind our, our rear garden where they had dumped a mound where they had dumped fallen trees and branches and then dumped dirt and trash on top of it. So the idea was to take that out so the land would be level going across. Oh, Zuzu. So the, so the ground would be level going across so we could do gardens out there next year. It's looking good, but we're still getting knotweed poking up here and there, which you, which you mowed down on the regs. Yep, and we've been putting the, the straw from the chicken coop out on the raw dirt to kind of help promote the grasses coming in, but also to help hold the dirt in place because everything's sloped, so we don't want all our dirt washing away every time it rains, and we do get a lot of water out there. I mean, we're getting nitrogen in the ground and I'm I'm having this constant argument with myself. Oh yes, we're improving this. Oh yes, we're improving the soil versus, oh, we're feeding the knotweed nitrogen. <laughs> I, I don't know what's gonna happen out there, but we are trying our best. It, it's gonna be a big experiment, that area. I wanna put in some robust raised beds. So tallish, um, something that's easy to work with. Lib and I had talked about, because he's doing brewing now, we had talked about putting in some hops rhizomes and maybe another arch in the back for that to climb up. Um, and I want to test drive some lavender varieties next year that I'm going to grow from seed and try them out in the back and see how they do back there. The whole back was just, when we moved in, it was overrun, it was full of trash. Um, it hadn't been managed for years and we had huge areas of standing water. I mean, we've got a half acre in what we call the back area and almost half of that was standing water. Just Mosquitoes like crazy. Yeah, so now that we're managing the water back there uh, a little more proactively, when we get the heavy rains, the water all channels down to one area and, and works its way out of the property. And it's really pretty too. It's, There's like a babbling brook down there now. Yeah. I mean, the first spring, it was the vast harvest of swamp cabbage just everywhere. Oh, the skunk cabbage. Uh, skunk yeah. cabbage yeah. through the whole property. And now we're getting it along where the main channel is, but now the native bushes and ivies are coming in we're starting to get some some fresh tree growth um a lot of berry bushes coming in the jewel weed has just exploded it's it looks so good it's like all these tiny yellow and orange gems when you walk back through there and we're also starting to get more wildlife back there now because the mm -hmm. paths provide a common pathway so it's it's a fairly regular occurrence for us to go out along the path out by Mailer's Landing itself and see deer tracks, see raccoon tracks. Um, we've seen fox back there. We've heard coyotes. We've got wild turkeys. Who do we have turkeys? Um, <laughs> bats, at least 30 different breeds of bird. We have rabbits. We have rabbits, um, groundhogs. So there's a lot going on. And as we're kind of reintroducing the native species and allowing them to flourish while getting rid of the invasive stuff, the whole system seems to be kind of resetting a bit. And that's our goal, you know. Yeah. I'm not trying to manage it, I'm just trying to steward it as best we can. Yeah. 
So, ooh, it's exciting. It's exciting. So, it doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, y'all moved a lot of stuff today. I held bags. I sealed bags. I tore open bags. I rolled some full bags. Not that many. Um, but these guys, these guys really did the heavy lifting, literally did the heavy lifting on this. And I am grateful. Thank you for hanging out with us through this, uh, this wood chip extravaganza, <laughs> <laughs> this wood chip Lollapalooza. Um, here we go. Here we go, y'all. So we will catch you up soon. Take care. Chip stock. interpretive dance. Thanks. Can you tell me about these chips? What's the story with these chips? So we cut down a whole bunch of fucking trees, right? And uh, so we got a big fucking wood chipper. See, without the fucking, I, I can't, can't use it. Can't help it. Um, <laughs>